Hello my soccer universe. It's starting to become an annual tradition on this channel that I'm ranting about Lusk firing another coach. And yes, I probably should do this and rant my in German. However, I want to make a wider point here on coaching stability where Lusk is really, 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 really bad at. But first the news, Coach Sageda was let go after, you know, the first nine games uh, in the new year. Ended with only one win and some so-and-so performance. I say there was only really one in there that was really bad. There were a few in there where, yeah, it got rough, but there was a clear downward turn and maybe then a plateauing at a not so good level. Um, he will be replaced by his assistant and also the assistant of previous two coaches uh, in Maxi Richer, a 30-year-old coach. Since he's on an interim basis, I don't want to comment too much. He also said in his first press conference, not too much will change except that we have to hold tighter together as a team. And then he didn't mean this as a criticism on Coach Sageda. Yeah, I guess he's young. In any case, I don't think much will change except that there's a new head coach in there and two of his assistants are gone. Um, and again, uh, <laughs> Lusk for the second time uh, in the past few years have to fire a coach who had a huge team around him, which is kind of a modern approach. But seemingly this is also becoming a problem. And, you know, in Austria, it's still probably with only two coaches you um, should go. But that's beside the point. That's all beside the point. Um, what really annoys me here is the lack of trust and stability from the leadership side. Because I know from watching for years and years and years, most successful teams, including Lusk, stick it out with a coach through the tough times and then hold on to the coach. Coaching stability is one of the major factors in success. To me, coaches should only let go after a full year not mid-season because it doesn't work it the data doesn't back it up it really doesn't if you have a uh, soccer is such a random sport and no one understands this randomness in this leadership position it's all uh being a uh, buoyed by public opinion and so on and unfortunately i saw it myself i personally took a liking to coach target i was not so convinced of him at first but i took a liking to him i liked how he talked i liked how he behaved and so on. Uh, he was rather straightforward, uh, but he also, you, th you could see, he is he's thinking a lot about the game and how he sees the game and what should be done. So whenever a coach gets fired, you usually get an attachment with, with your coach of your team and especially uh, it coming, I still think it came a little bit out of nowhere because everything was kind of, when he, he was hired, yeah, we're going to start a new, with a new coach, we start a new project, we're going to go back to the roots that made us so successful, this high intensity, kind of repulsed have a lot of gang pressing and so on. Um, to have this already annulled after not even a full season, that to me does not sound right. It just doesn't. And it's unfortunately a pattern where um, you have hired two coaches that were rather, you know, well liked by the fan base, had actually some success. I think our best two coaches was Coach Eastman and Coach Kuba, where both times the teams played really, really well and were successful. I have to say, I didn't like the Kuba appointment initially, but what they played a year ago, coming into the new stadium and the championship rounds was some of the best stuff that I've ever seen Lusk play. He was let go. Seemingly with disagreements with the sporting director, I think that the sponsors didn't like that he used some rather rough uh, language on a live stream during uh, the prepar mid-season preparation in the winter break. I think this was his undoing. But what we played was really good. It was not Lusk style from what we well, know the high intensity stuff, but it was more like possession based and so on. I really enjoyed myself. I was gutted when he was uh, let go. I did not like Kuba initially, mainly because I associated him so much with Rapid. But he was one of the most successful coaches that you uh, could have that is purely from Austria. He was successful. He finished in the third, third place. And I would have liked to see a second season. But I got on board with Coach Sai. Let's go back, back to the roots. And I was on board with, you know, let's give him a year to adjust. And then in the second year, then we put the pressure on him and say, you know, it would be nice. Third place is the bare minimum. This season, nothing like that was ever communicated. Now you're suddenly in fourth place, but please. 
if I look at the last three games, I let yes, the end of the regular season was horrific, but it was kind of coming after a big cup game, and after that you had such a, a cushion towards fourth place that yes, this cushion got smaller and smaller and smaller until it's vanished. But you still were in third place up until the last round for nine games without playing well. You still stayed in third place. And this is also based on the work of Coach Sageda in the fall, especially what they played in October and November, was really, really sensational. Yes, Europa League was unlucky. And I think this is what I have to say for about Coach Sageda. It's unlucky. Whatever he did was unlucky. Even now this streak... If the ball bounces a few times differently, I mean, I look at the game at Klangfurt at home, the first one, where we played a 2-2 two -two draw, we salvaged it late, but there were so many chances, you should have won that one. And this is the, it was all always the shoots against Salzburg in the cup, you should have won. In the league, you should have gotten at least a draw out of that one, the chances were there. Against Sturm now away from home, the chances were there that they get a draw there. Against Rapid, yeah, okay, that was a nil-nil. But uh, again, championship, three, uh, three games in. Rapid away, you get a draw. That's a good result. Klagenfurt at home was not pretty, but you beat them. You win. Sturm away from home. Sturm is one of the best teams in Austria. One of the two best teams. You could have gotten a draw. Probably should even. Sturm were better in the first half. But I think this is a game that you can lose. And yes, scoring is a problem. But in Graz, scoring has always been a problem. So uh, to me, the timing does make sense. The communication, I think he barely ever got properly backed up. He, when he was hired, he was seen as the ideal situ uh, solution. The coach that we always want to have. And now, was no public commitment to him and so on. Although he is, he is a young coach. I mean, he was the voice of the club and he was a club man. Let go. Let go. And you start anew. And that's not the way to get us to a successful club. All the successful clubs have long-term coaching in strong conjunction with the sporting director. And I feel the sporting director, Vujanovic, that was a hire that I still am not super convinced. He made some good signings, but in the last summer, it was more busts. So there you go. I'm really, really not happy with this one. Uh, it just shows me that this club, and I think the real reason is, you're now in fourth place. Third place, at the moment, gets you a guaranteed European group phase. That means money. Now that you're in danger of losing this third place that you thought that you had in there, that was make the leadership nervous. And why? Because the stadium got 35 million more expensive. A bill that you have to foot yourself. That's why you have pink jerseys yellow sleeves and all kinds of other things where you kind of take every bit of money, the most expensive Europa League tickets uh, in the entire competition. That's all behind because you need to make this money in and now if this is in danger, yeah, but then stick with Coach Kubauer to begin with. So yeah, I'm again there. It's a new start. I sometimes I really hate being a fan of this club, especially when I see that the leadership is so short termistic instead of think, thinking much for the long term. And I cannot tell you, I am so happy about the current leadership overall and grateful what they have done. Ten years ago, Lusk were in the doldrums. They were, it was close to be them not existing. What has been done over the last ten years is nothing short of a miracle. I would not stand here and say, oh, Lusk is a safe fourth place. Safe-ish fourth place, let's say. I still think that even in the currency, we would have finished at least fourth. Third is probably the kicker. Uh, that was never thinkable. But it became, um, part is, was hiring coach Glasner. Sticking it out with him after a bad first season and seeing how it suddenly worked again. You had the recipe, why don't you? Why don't you keep it? it? I, the, the thing that annoys me with Lusk the most is that the club is perceived around here and acts around here like they're Bayern Munich. But they don't have any of the success of Bayern Munich. That's what really annoys me. That's what annoys me. 
a little bit more humility, a little bit more of a uh, concept. That's what I would like to see. And I hope they get, get around, but I guess you have to get rid of the sporting director as well. My thoughts on this one. In any case, please let, let, them, let me know what you think about this topic, about coaching stability and, and so on. I really hate firing coaches. If I was in charge of football, I would say uh, coaches, I would f strictly forbid coaches cannot be fired during the season. They just cannot. I ac actually would say that if a coach starts a new with, with a club, he needs to get a two-year period. After, the th after, after two years, he's fair game, but you have to stick it out. That's my personal opinion, because it's such a random sport. And the randomness makes for irrational decisions. That's why everyone has problems with gambling and, and so because no one understands randomness. Okay, enough for me. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Talk to you soon about more things in my soccer universe. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.